Hello and welcome to another Island Kitchen. Hello, hi, now then, Les, what are we up to today? Hi Vic, today we're going to cook some lovely piece of beef, a sirloin steak. Uh, we have two different meats here, sirloin and fillet, but we're going to cook a sirloin steak, we're going to cook it in restaurant style, because people often ask me, when they buy the beef in the supermarket, why can't they get it like they had it in the restaurant? And I'm going to give you a few pointers on the people at home, how to make it like a restaurant uh, steakhouse steak. And right. it's going to be really easy. Okay, so first of all, which is which? Okay, here you have the sirloin, which is uh, a rounder piece like this. It's kind of an oblong shape there. This is the sirloin, it's a little bit tougher meat. If it's good quality, it's not going to be so tough. It's a little bit tougher, but it's more flavoursome than the sole meal, which is more of a luxurious part of the, the beef, which is softer, uh, with a little bit less flavour, in fact, but it is the more luxurious part of the meat. Um, and I always like to say there's two types of people in the world. People who love sirloin, people who love fillet. And today we're going to use the sirloin to make a steakhouse steak. A steakhouse steak. Yeah. Right, OK, so first of all, you buy it from decent butchers, very important. Very important. This is the first point I want to make is when you go to the supermarket and you, you, if you go to a restaurant and you have a lovely piece of steak of sirloin and then you go to the supermarket and say, okay, I want to have to do this for my friends or for my family or whatever, and you pick up those packets of pre-cut stuff, this is no good. This is not what we work with in the restaurants. In the restaurants, we work with good meat from a good butchers. They know what we want. We cut it to order ourselves in the restaurant. And if you have a good butcher, he will cut it for you. So get to know your butcher. Good relationship with your exactly. butcher. Exactly. The same with your fishmonger because you'll never get to good ingredients. The stuff that comes in the packets, it's basically cat food. It's really thin fillets. It's, it's not good beef and you put it in a pan and it stews and it soaks and that's not what we want. So first thing we're going to do is get our pan on. It's very important to start off with a hot pan. Just get it good and hot. Don't have it smoking too much, but a good hot pan because you want to get that sizzle when it hits the pan because that's going to give you that caramelized crispy outside. If you put it in when it's a little bit cold, it's going to stew and it's going to be bland and it's going to almost steam in the pan. So that's heating up. And the thing you've, t you've already taught me about pans is get a good quality pan because I went, last time yeah. I worked with you, I went home and binned a couple of my old saucepans and just bought one decent heavy bottomed pan. Yeah, it's very important. Like a good non-stick pan is the trick. Yeah. A good thick non-stick pan, you can do a lot of different things. If you have two or three of them, it's the best. I try to stay away from all those different sets of knives and pans and pots and things. Yeah. Uh, get a lot what you of need. really good quality and it costs a lot of money. So a really good pan, a couple of really good pans and you're boxed off. That's all I've got on myself at home. So let's cut a piece of beef. Um, like I say, if you're talking to your butcher now, you can say to him, you know, you don't have to be a professional. You don't have to be a butcher yourself. You can just say to the guy, listen, you know, have confidence and say to him, listen, I want sirloin, I want it this big, you know, tell him, yeah. cut me one this big, cut me one this big, a couple of inches, you know, make it, make it good beef, not the really thin stuff. So we're going to cut one nice one like this. Which is about a, this is about a 10 ouncer there, right. probably an 8 ouncer from the restaurant. So this is basically what you'll get when you come to the restaurants. It's nice, it's fat, you see the nice skin up here, it's been nice and clean down there. And the difference between that and the stuff you get is, it's two different worlds apart, you know. Right, So and again, it looks a really sort of nice red, it's, it's not pale, it's quite... Beautiful quite... colour, you can see the little ripples of fat that come through. You see those little ripples of fat coming through there? Yeah. That's what gives it the flavour and gives it its texture, you know. Okay. Um, Basically, if you see it in the supermarket up there like this, most of the time it's good. Ask them where it comes from, get to know the guy, ask them what's good, what's in, what's in at the moment, what's, what's fresh and what's, you know, what's the best meat to buy on the day. Because that's what we do in the restaurants and that's how it's, why it's always good. It's always a good standard. So we've got our pan on. We're not going to put oil in the pan, we're going to put oil on the meat, some good olive oil. Why do you do that? Why not in the pan? Because uh, we don't want to smoke the oil out too much, we don't want to cook it through. You don't want it sitting around deep fried in oil. Just, if you put it in the oil on the plate, like this, it's just going to take enough oil just to coat it. Oh, wow. If you have all that oil in the pan, you don't really need all that. So, next, we're going to season it some rock salt. Yeah. Like this. It looks like a lot, but you're going to lose about 30% of this when it hits the pan, you know. Better to stay away from the fine stuff because it's probably going to soak into it and make it a little bit tough. Rock salt on the outside. Bit of black pepper. A lot of chefs will disagree with me and say don't put the black pepper on early because it's going to burn the pan. But if you have control of your heat, it's not going to burn. Get it. To so, there's nothing but flavour in here. Right, okay. Covered, and this this pan ready. is really hot. Woof, it's smoking. This is a good pan. <laughs> so, it's just smoking. In goes that. There's the sizzle we're looking for. Not gone crazy, not too much smoke coming around. But again, if you're doing it at home in your house, in the kitchen, turn on the fan, open the window. Windows window, open. Get, get everything going. 
Because you're going to start cooking we, like we, a chef. We have a, a joke at home. We have a sign that says, "When the when the smoke alarm goes off, dinner's ready." It's ready. <laughs> I tried to avoid that myself, <laughs> but you know. Okay, so this is in there cooking away. I've lowered the heat down. So now what's going to happen is slowly, slowly, it's going to cook away there. It's going to caramelise on the outside. It's going to give that lovely brown finish on. It's going to seal all those flavours on the inside. I think one thing that I know people get worried about when they go to a restaurant is what they're asking for. Is it blue? Is it? Do they just plump them? What's, what are the different grades? What should you be getting for a blue, for a medium? Oh, well, for, for a blue, it's, it's seared on the outside, just warm in the middle, but pretty raw on the inside. And then you come to rare, again, it's a little bit redder, and then medium rare, which is the, probably the best way to eat meats. Everybody's got their own flavour. Up to medium medium well and well done everybody has something and very very well done some people like it believe it or not really really well like, done some people like it burnt wow <laughs> but but for you what would you suggest is is probably in your professional opinion the best kind of way to have that kind of meat well i can't tell you my professional opinion i can tell you my, my pers personal opinion okay your personal i tell opinion. you it's medium rare is my way to eat it. medium rare and i think 99 percent of the chefs in the world will eat it that way okay um so as I said, we're making a steakhouse, steak. Uh, we're going to do some lovely sauté potatoes. That I got a really smoking hot pan here. Uh, I got these potatoes that have been boiled and leave, left to cool down. And we're just going to slice them up, rustic style. Chunky. Chunky, skin on and everything. They're going to get lovely and crispy as they cook. Into this oil. Again, we're getting that frying sound. Now you really want to have the windows open. <laughs> so. They're in there frying. Again, we want to we want to get those lovely brown color on those potatoes. Let's take a look at our uh, steak here as it's cooking down. And let's see if it's getting the color. You see it's starting oh, to begin to get wow. the color there? Yeah. We can just pump it up a little bit hotter there now. Potatoes are going to take a while to cook. You want to get them nice and brown on the outside. Obviously, it's got a lot of water. Potato being a vegetable, it's got a little water sealed inside. Um, Again, so you've, you've, you've done rock, rock salt with this? Just rock salt because now with the steak, just as good to use fine salt on okay. here. But Get to know your seasons. I know people, a lot of people try to avoid salt in their, in their food and stuff like that, but it's not about salt and things. It's about adding salt to bring out flavors of things. And people really get caught up on having too much salt in their diet and stuff, which is the problem with the food, things like this is it's more to do with having a lot of hidden salt in your diet. It's in the pre-packed pre yeah. stuff and the pre-cooked stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All this rubbish that, uh, you know, this is, this is what's bad for you. So this could, we'll add a little bit of oil there just to help it along. Okay. To help it along means give it a little bit more color. You don't want to you don't want to stress the meat out. You don't want to be frying in a too hot a pan. You've got a good medium heat. You have to cook away. So the spuds are cooking away. The meat is cooking away. We'll just keep our eye on that, making sure it's caramelized on each side. Right. A good steakhouse steak always comes with a beautiful side salad. So as you can see here, I've got a lovely mix of lettuces here. I've got some uh, curly endive, some radicchio, and some lolo is what we call it back home. So this is a lovely little selection. We're going to do a very simple tomato and onion with a tomato and onion salad with a lovely honey mustard dressing. Okay, Ooh. so very rustic. In goes the tomato, it takes very little time to prepare. It's gonna look great, it's gonna be full of flavor. And again, this time you use a red onion, because a lot of the times when I'm here and, and you cook, you use a, a white onion because you say it's a little bit sweeter. Yeah, the, the red onion is in fact a little bit sweeter when it's raw, and the white onion is a little bit sweeter when it's cooked. So for a lot of the dishes that have a white finish on them, like soups and things like this, I use the white onion or if I'm caramelizing to make soups. And for the salads, I like to use red just because it's a vibrant color and it's just a little bit different, but the white is just as good. So let's turn that over now, that steak. As you can see, it's a little bit caramelized. Yeah. The thing with steak is you can turn it and move it as much as you like, just to get all the color. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get color on, the, on this side. We're gonna turn it again, get colors on all the sides, sealing in every part of the steak. Yes. Keep all that juice and flavor on the inside. But again, not cooking on too high a heat, on a medium heat, leaving it cooked, leaving it color. So back to our salad. We've got the tomatoes in here. We've got a lettuce in here. Let's get a bit of red onion. Just cut this bad boy in half. Take the ends off. This is the easiest way to do an onion. Half at first, peel this skin away. And, and then, uh, then we have the onion trick. The onion trick. Well, we're actually gonna just slice this one. We're not gonna, normally we dice it along. This time we're gonna do it in nice slices. Now there's two ways you can do this. So you can come along this way. I prefer to have the long half moon shaped slices. So we're gonna come along with nice thin slices like that but it's whatever you fancy. I just think it looks a little bit prettier like this. Tad more professional. Yeah, a little bit prettier, but everyone do themselves. So, sprinkle these onions in here, leave them drop. Really simple salad. Yeah. And what's, you know, it's tomato and onion. This alone is great. A bit of olive oil in there, a bit of vinegar in there. That's gonna be fabulous. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a really simple, really tasty dressing. And it's gonna help to bring out all the flavors in that salad. So, 
How's there sticking along? Oh, that's looking good. So, you can see we've got a bit of colour on here. Leave it. We've turned it up to seal this side now, okay? Yeah. Again, if, if you want, just push it to the side of the pan. A little bit more oil just to help it along. You don't have to go crazy. Because what happens with oil is it'll dry out of the pan, it'll soak up a lot. But a little bit of oil will help it colour. Because so, I presume if you didn't move it on its side, you just did the top and the bottom, eventually they'd just come and meet each other in the middle and it would be completely cooked all the way yes, through, dry it yeah. out. What we're doing right now is we're really just sealing at the moment. When we've got all the colour we want on it, when we have all the flavour sealed inside, then we're going to put the temperature down and we're going to drop it down into the pan and leave it cooked to the point where we have it. And I'll talk to you a little bit about the different points. Those are gorgeous. Look at the beautiful colours. They are family. fantastic. Steakhouse style. So... Salad dressing. Amit San. Potatoes are almost ready. You can just leave them there cooking slowly, slowly in the pan. And we're going to make this really quick, simple dressing, all right? Get yourself a bowl. Antiqua mustard, uh, whole grain mustard. Whole grain. Or pebble mustard, I like to call it. Half a teaspoon. Yeah. Dijon, let's say full teaspoon. Whoa. In goes. Bit of honey. Let's say double the honey to... Uh, Mustard, so let's say two Okay, so right, two so, so double, yes, yeah, so whatever mustard you put in, put double, double honey. the honey. You can make it as sweet as you like, or you can have it a little bit more bitter with the mustard. I like it a little bit sweet because it really helps to bring out the flavours in the steak. Okay. So this is going to be our base of this beautiful dressing, and you're going to love this. I think anyone who tries it at home is really going to like it too, because it really is so good and so simple. So this is going to be our base. Let's whisk that together. Now, this is the trick. You're going to add oil, little by little, and we're going to whisk and we're going to emulsify okay. the oil. By emulsify, I mean get little droplets of air. We're going to mix it in and it's going to get thicker and thicker and thicker. And this is what's going to make our dressing just can like... Can we help you? No, this is fine. I'll, I can do it this way. multi skill. So, I've had a lot of ah. practice. So in goes the oil. As you can see, it's starting to thicken already. Yeah. It's starting to emulsify. Little by little. Okay, so we need it just for that salad. Right, so we've got some good olive oil in there. The two mustards, the honey. Already that's got brilliant flavor. Does this keep in the fridge? You know, if you, if this, you made uh, this, quite a big bit. This dressing is gonna keep in your fridge for a couple of weeks, if not more. This is a really good summer dressing. It's really good, it works great if you're doing fish, if you have some fries, just a little dressing. It just lifts up the salad, yeah. you know? I mean, you can buy a lot of dressings in a silver maggot, which are basically the same thing, but they've always got a little chemically kind of taste. Yeah. This one you can do yourself at home. So and brilliant. You can adjust it. Yeah. Little but you put it in a, a put it in one of those, like a screw. Yeah, screw on top. Yeah. And then when you just need it, just give it a shake like this, get it on your salad and you're out there. So in here with this, we're going to add a little bit of white wine vinegar. What, 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 I almost <laughs> put brandy in there, you know? That would have lifted it up. <laughs> well, that, would have, that would have given it a little bit of white wine vinegar, and you can see now it's going to turn a little bit wider, and it's going to look a little bit more like the ones that you buy in the supermarket. Now, yeah. A little bit of seasoning, bring out the flavour, and this is an amazing dressing. It and does I'm going to smell. let you taste this right now before oh, we can, I was going to This say. goes on top of the salad, and we're going to ring it around, because this is going to be fantastic. And it's really going to work well with this steak. Can I just pinch it? Can I pinch it? Why don't you have a taste? Okay, I'm just going to... Actually, I'm just going to pinch a lettuce in. Can I just pinch it? Yeah, it's going to bring it. Have it with the lettuce. It's better again. It's going to work Ooh. better again. Oh. Mm. So what are we thinking about that? Is that not a great dressing? Wow. Sweet, bitter. Whoa. It's going to help bring out the tomatoes, the red onions. Let's move it around oh. in there. Shake it, make sure it all gets... Everything gets coated. Very rustic. This is like you get in the steakhouses, you know, really good steakhouses. I have to say, that is the best dressing I've ever had. Better than anything you buy in the supermarket. And how long did it take me to make? Oh. What? All of 40 seconds. That is absolutely wow. gobsmacking. Love it, love right. it, love it. So glad you like it. So, mm. this tomato, look at the colours coming out of here. This is fantastic. Yeah, the crew can back off. I'm having, I've, I've got the salad. Salad's mine. So. Actually, no, in this crew, they wouldn't want the salad. They just want the steak. <laughs> well, they still have the steak. You can stick vegetarian, they'll have the meat. <laughs> So as you can see, the steak is getting great colour on all the sides, nice and cooked. It's still, I know by touching it from experience, I know that this is coming up the rare, it's coming touching medium rare now. If you can't, if you don't have your experience, how can you test when you think it's done? That's really easy, you can cheat. You can make a little cut in there, have a look inside. And then just squeeze it back together again. And squeeze it back together. Yeah. Don't even squeeze it back together, just make a cut look inside. <laughs> it's your kitchen, take control of it. You got the meats. 
do it your way. Do it the way how you want it done. I'm going to put another level to this. What I'm going to do is take a nice little sprig of rosemary here. Just snap it. Right, when you snap it like that, the juice is coming out. Rub the beef. This is adding, adding another dynamic of flavour to the beef. Rub it in there. Wow. I've never thought of... Yeah, just, just in the literally pan. just rubbing it on. No problem. Bit of time. Rub it in. More flavours, more depth. Beautiful piece of beef. You've added your herbs. It's seasoned perfectly. You've got good oil. You've got the potatoes lovely and caramelised. You're really cooking like a chef now. Last trick of the beef is to leave it sit. It's the biggest mistake people make with beef. They buy fillet steak or they buy sirloin, they stick it in a really hot pan, or they stick it in a, worse again, really cold pan, and they take it out, they put it to the plate and they dig in. Don't do it. You're like how throwing long, your money in the bin. How long should it sit for? You want to be leaving it. As a rule, probably, the length it takes to cook, leave it sit for half that time in minutes. So if it's taken 15 minutes to cook, leave it for seven it, and a half minutes This is going to sound a really stupid question, but doesn't it get cold? No, it's not going to get cold. It's going to keep... I prefer to have it a little bit colder and have the perfect, most delicate steak than the eating tough steak that I paid a lot of money for. And that's, that's right, okay. okay. So if, if you must get quite angry on the chef if you've done that. You've sent it off, off service and somebody sends it back saying, oh, it's not hot enough. <laughs> that's <laughs> it. It'll never happen. Honest to God, if you're cooking with beef like this, a good chunk of beef like this, this is holding so much heat inside there, you know? Yeah. This pan is at 200, 300 degrees right now and that's holding so much heat in there. You can smell the, the, the herbs, herbs and everything. Watch this. I'm taking this. This is how easy it is. I'm taking this off here. I'm taking out these little herbs that I put in here. I'm just leaving them sit beside it. Yeah. All the beauty that's in there of the herbs. This is not ready to serve. This so will, this now sits this is for sit a good sort of yeah. seven, eight minutes. I'm going to leave this sit here. In the time, I'm going to make a pepper sauce to serve with it and make it really, really steakhouse, really flavorsome sauce with this pan that we have. So. Like, you, like we've just done with the steak, we've got all the flavours in there. We've got all the salt, the pepper and the herbs and everything, all the flavours in the pan. To this, we're going to add a drop of brandy. He's Be good. careful in your kitchen because <laughs> this can go on fire real quick. Yes. <laughs> One, two, three. <clears throat> but only if you want it. You can put it on fire. So it's not going to burn. So you're okay. Just be careful when you do it at home. Okay. So now we're deglazing the pan with brandy. We're taking yeah. all the flavour that's gone there. We're going to reduce this down. It's going to have all the juices from the meat, the herbs, the pepper, the can, salt, the Can we oil. use cheapo brandy or is it one of these cheapo things? Cheapo brandy is perfect. Is it fine? Cooking brandy. Yes. Yes. Cool. Just going to bring it down. We're going to leave the alcohol burn off. Just, it's going to take that bitter taste away from it with the alcohol. We're just going to have that lovely smoky taste of the brandy. Just bring it down by, I'd say, a half, three quarters. Okay. What I mean by that is reducing it down just till you get a bit of a liquor on the end. And that's where all the flavour is going to come from. To that, we're going to add some green peppercorns, just like you buy in the supermarket. Just sprinkle them in there. Add as many as you like, as hot as you like it. And they will, the, they are literally the things that are just going to sort of ooze out heat. So the yeah. more you have, the hotter. The, the hotter it's going to be. They're going to make the sauce a little bit hotter, but what I like about the green ones is because they're, they're served in like a pickle, they come in a pickle. When you bite into them, they burst and they got a the little heat. Even that burst of heat. And it's going to work really good with the steak, with the caramelized potato and the sweetness of this. I have to say, I'm finding it really hard not to keep nibbling this salad. That dressing this today, is you? fantastic. Absolutely. So, take a look here. we we'll put this on a higher heat. Right, it's reduced down. You can see it's just have to come to liquor. Let's add some double cream. Now, we're going to infuse the double cream with the brandy, with all the flavors it's taken from the pan, with the green peppers, touch of salt, now what we're going to do is bring it to the boil, reduce it by half. And, and we're going to have this lovely thick sauce. Roughly how long does that sort of take? Well, we're going to see now. It's going to take about three or four minutes, I think, and we're going to have this perfect sauce. There's going to be no salad left. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. That's why we cook. People enjoy it. So let, let this come up to the boil. Our steak is sitting nice. We're going to get a lovely plate to serve. And I'm going to show you how good this, this is going to really be. So. Let's break, take our steak over here. As you see, it's been sitting for about two or three minutes. That's all it really needs. Two or three. It should be around medium rare right now. You know, the longer you leave it sit, it's actually going to continue cooking for a few minutes after you take it out of the pan because there's so much heat inside it. Uh, so if you're taking it off at medium rare, but if you leave it sit for four or five minutes, it's going to be just about medium when you take it out. So you've got to always bear that in uh, mind. Yes, because it will. It's, it's a bit like a, bo a boiled egg, isn't it? It will continue, continue to cook. Continue cooking because it holds so much heat in there. So let's cut this into slices like you do. So lovely, medium rare. What I mean, you can see by that, it's cooked just around the outside. It's oh, yeah. just blushing through the middle. That's a nice word. It's blushing. It's blushing. That's nice. I like that. Blushing. Oh, chefs, we love those words. Blushing. blushing yes, there. it's a blushing steak. So it's got all those lovely juices still coming out. 
You can see how well it looks there. That's beautiful. Our pepper sauce is boiled up now. We're going to leave it come down a little bit. Like I say, reduce it and it's going to intensify the flavors. The cream is going to double and it's going to become this really beautiful sauce. Our lovely rustic potatoes have all caramelized. And the thing I like about this as well is I tend to faff with them. So I keep going and prodding them and they tend to break up. Whereas you've literally just yeah. left them alone. I've left them on a medium heat. I've had control of the heat mm. all the time. I've started them on a hot one yeah. just to caramelize the same as I did with the beef. I've turned it down and then I'm in control. Don't leave, don't leave your kitchen take control of you. Don't have you ovens are... up too high. Don't have, take it. I've moved the pan slightly away from the flame. So I'm doing something else. I've got an eye on them. And this is about learning to cook. Once you learn how to control those different heats, never be afraid to, okay, I'm, I'm doing a recipe. Don't be afraid to take this off, leave it sit for a minute while you catch up with something else, finish it off. Once the pan is staying a little bit warm, it's not going to destroy whatever you're cooking. And that, that is a rule I think of thumb. it is. I think for a lot of people who, you know, you're a professional chef, but for us it's the timings that sometimes, yeah. trying to get everything out on the plate at the right time, and that's when you just sort of go... And this ah! is the biggest, this is the biggest uh, trick I can tell you, is that if you don't have control, stop. If I don't have control, I want to just I take this off and say, find out where you are, finish this, get back to the sauce again. Right, yeah, so don't this just is what we do when we're working in ahead. professional kitchens, but we do it on a bigger scale. We do it with loads of things at the same time. Controlling this, stopping this one, bringing it back up. We're, as I like to say, heat engine. You know? Heat engineers. So, is, that, is that the new professional that's term my new for profession. chefs? So, look at this lovely sauce. It's got all the flavours in there of the beef, of the herbs, the green peppercorns, the lovely olive oil. This is lovely salad with the sweet dressing. This is ready to serve. Beautiful. And these are all the ingredients that you need for Les's recipe this week. You'll need 180 grams of sirloin of beef, some rock salt, some pepper, extra virgin olive oil, rosemary and thyme. For the potatoes, two pre-boiled potatoes with some herbs for flavouring. For the brandy sauce, brandy, green peppercorns, double cream and salt. And for Les's amazing salad dressing, white wine vinegar, some Dijon mustard, whole grain mustard, salt and pepper, olive oil and honey to taste. Well, what more can you ask for? Fantastic food amazing salad and the dressing oh, fantastic location it's not a bad life join us again next time when we'll be doing more cooking in the island kitchen here at mood beach restaurant